walkout at General Motors puts the brakes on production of GM's popular sports utility vehicles. Severe weather leaves flooding, injuries, and property damage across the nation's midsection. In parts of Florida, they're praying for a lot of rain as wildfires scorch thousands of acres. And campaign finance reform, was it ever anything more than just a photo opportunity? This is the CBS Morning News for Friday, June 19th. Good morning and thanks for joining us. I'm Dawn Stensland. General Motors' North American production could grind to a virtual halt this weekend. Two crippling strikes are getting worse. They've now idled or slowed production at 21 GM assembly lines, including one in Oklahoma City, where 2,500 workers were let go last night. The strike could not have come at a worse time. The summer is the hottest selling season for cars. Dealers and others are really feeling the heat. Jim Axelrod reports. Today makes two weeks for the General Motors strike. Neither side is even hinting at a settlement. Job! J-O-B-S! Job! The company and its workforce are at odds over how much work can be shifted to non-union plants at home and abroad, where the cars can be produced more cheaply. As far as this uh, global economy and putting work elsewhere, I always feel like you take care of home first. The strike is already slowing production. 100,000 fewer cars a week now, $200 million already in lost profits. The price, say labor analysts, of a more competitive future. GM is sticking to its guns. It views this as an investment for where it wants to go in the future. When a company as big as GM has a strike, it doesn't take long for the effects to be felt across the country. What started at one GM plant in Michigan has spread to 20 nationwide, and now, onto dealers' lots and beyond. There are hoods and fenders for another week of repairs at this Chevy dealer in Dallas, but half the spare parts are on back order. I don't think people really understand the impact that it's going to make in their day-to-day -day lives just yet, uh, but it, it's going to be there uh, and it's going to happen. Jack Hanna has seen it happen already. At his chicken stand in the shadow of a GM plant in Arlington, Texas, business is down 40%. Uh, it seems like other people are uh, controlling my life now. Talks have resumed, but little progress is reported. This GM foundry in Ohio is among the next, preparing to close Monday. Jim Axelrod, CBS News, Dallas. Residents across a large part of the Midwest have lots of cleaning up to do this morning after severe weather battered the region. Yesterday, flash floods from heavy rains trapped drivers in parts of North Dakota. And in northeastern Iowa, the town of Nashua is closed off this morning after it was struck by a tornado. There were no reported injuries, but damage is described, as you can see, as extensive. At least 25 people were injured in La Crosse, Wisconsin, when strong winds toppled a large circus tent filled with animals and hundreds of people. Witnesses say the winds lifted the 500-pound tent support poles right off the ground. President Clinton has ordered federal aid for eight counties of North Florida where wildfires have consumed thousands of acres since last month. Sparse rain and record-setting temperatures have left many parts of the state dangerously dry. Byron Pitts reports from one community that is in the line of fire. For a second day, the flames are too close, the smoke too thick in Waldo, Florida. We've evacuated approximately 600 people uh, due to the fact of smoke and possible fire. A small town in the path of a big fire, a mile wide and seven miles long. One of 100 wildfires that have destroyed 46,000 acres and 80 homes in North Florida since Memorial Day. Ooh, we, we tried to stop it, but that's try was all. Clark Smith's timber farm sits on the edge of Waldo. He lost 40 acres yesterday. Now he and his son are trying to save the 100 acres they have left. This right here just happens to be a buffer to the city of Waldo. So if this, is, if this don't burn, the city of Waldo don't burn up. The Smith family refused to leave when police evacuated Waldo. There's too much at stake. Needless to say, it's uh, hard to see your timber burn up after you've worked on it for so many years. You uh, know, going up in smoke. North Florida's in the midst of a record heat wave. With high winds and no heavy rain in sight, the ground is bone dry. Firemen say this is no longer just a forest, it's fuel.
See, these trees are on fire, but they're just smoldering. Now we're going to try to just wet this down a little bit. Try. It's taken firemen from six states four weeks just to contain the fires. Clark Smith knows he and his son can't stop it. They're just trying to slow it down. Okay. We just need some relief. All right. Byron Pitts, CBS News, Waldo, Florida. Congressional Republicans say they're planning to present a slimmed down version of a tough national tobacco bill that would not raise cigarette prices but would still try to cut teen smoking. Meanwhile, President Clinton says he remains open to a bipartisan effort to craft another bill. But both sides are blaming each other for derailing that measure. It's dead today. It may not be dead tomorrow and it's not dead over the long run because the public health need is great. If the Commerce Committee wants to uh, sober up and produce a, a, a bill that is much, much smaller that all sides can support, uh, you know, that would be something different. Passage of a national tobacco bill appears unlikely until at least the end of the year. House Republican leaders have promised to wrap up the drawn out debate over campaign finance reform before the August recess, but several Democrats are skeptical, citing all the talk of the past and no action. Bob Schieffer reports. So let's shake hands right here in front of everybody. It was three years ago last week that the president and the Republican speaker shook hands and promised to do something about all the money flooding our elections. So how's the effort going? In campaign finance reform, I fully expect us to be completed sometime in July and to be completed with something successful. Translation, nothing has been done. Reform has been blocked at every turn, and even though debate on new legislation to overhaul the system began, don't hold your breath. Opponents have already drawn up 283 amendments to water it down. These amendments are the legislative equivalent of a ball and chain. To understand why nothing ever gets done on this, you have to leave the Capitol and take a late evening stroll through Washington when the politicians hit the streets and really get to work. As the president did one night this week, he picked up a half million dollars for his party when he dropped in for dinner at a Georgetown home. And when he drove on to a nightclub, he picked up a half million more. But raising a million dollars in a couple of hours on today's mashed potato circuit is small potatoes. That same night, Republicans gathered for a vast Washington dinner. With a guest list that read like a who's who of corporate America and then some, they raised an astonishing $10 million. And that's the answer. The politicians claim they need the money to get elected, and when they can talk people into giving as much as this crowd gave, why would they want to change the rules to stop them? Bob Schieffer, CBS News, Washington. We'll be back with our business report. Also, we'll tell you why thousands of World Cup ticket holders may be out of luck. In sports, a first at the U.S. Open for Casey Martin. First, here's Ed Bradley with a look ahead to the CBS Evening News. Tonight, we'll tell you about the latest approach to dealing with infertility. Couples who can't have children are adopting embryos from fertility doctors. And we'll introduce you to some of the 6,000 volunteers who are building an entire neighborhood of homes for the needy in just one week. You can get your dentures fresh <sighs> or extra fresh. <laughs> Only Effortant Plus has Listerine ingredients to get them extra fresh. Effort and Plus. The plus is extra freshness. Imagine life without allergies and sinus pain with Benadryl Allergy Sinus Headache. Unlike leading prescription allergy medicines, it gives you sinus pain relief, plus the allergy relief of Benadryl's histamine blocker. Benadryl Allergy Sinus Headache. No more excuses. Zyban is here. Prescription medicine, only available from your doctor. Ask your doctor about Zyban. Call 1-888-650-PILL to find out more. Zyban. Now you have another choice. Yves Saint Laurent Eyewear by Luxottica. What do you want people to see? I want you to see discretion. Dignity. I want you to see <laughs> how the girl next door turned out. Let them see you in Yves Saint Laurent Eyewear by Luxottica. Hey, the front desk gave me this coupon book. Oh, great. I don't want to go to Monkey World. I don't want to go to the dental museum. Really? How about SeaWorld? How about the Hard Rock Cafe? Check into any Comfort Inn or Comfort Suites and get Comfort coupons. Don't toy with us, please. Over $1,000 in discounts on stuff you really want. Yes. Theme parks, movies, airline yes. tickets. So now we can afford another two weeks? Kids stay free and you get the coupon book. It's more than a room, it's comfort. The 
depth of this kid's preparation for this moment just runs so deep. There's no doubt in my mind he's very aware of the significance of this putt. There it is. A win for the ages. A father can change the world one child at a time. President Clinton is reinforcing a U.S. initiative to reconcile its differences with Iran. The two nations have had no diplomatic ties for two decades now. President Clinton has recorded a goodwill message due to be broadcast during the World Cup soccer match between the U.S. and Iran on Sunday. As we cheer today's game between American and Iranian athletes, I hope it can be another step toward ending the estrangement between our nations. Secretary of State Madeleine Albright raised the possibility of building ties with Iran in a speech Wednesday. It drew a hostile response from the Islamic Republic. The U.S. reportedly has been ignoring the smuggling of large amounts of Iraqi oil into Turkey for several years. The smuggling is in violation of U.N. sanctions. The New York Times says the Clinton administration has chosen to look the other way because the operation benefits Turkey, a crucial ally in U.S. policy toward Iraq. It also benefits the Kurdish minority that controls northern Iraq. Checking business news this morning, a day after surging forward, Wall Street lost some steam. The Dow Jones Industrial Average opens at 88.13 today. That's falling uh, about 16 and a half points in heavy trading yesterday. NASDAQ opens at 17.72, down almost four points. In Tokyo, the benchmark Nikkei index lost more than half a percent overnight. And gold opened in London this morning at $293.10 an ounce. That's up 30 cents from yesterday's closing price in New York. There is something positive coming out of the Asian financial crisis. Mortgage rates are at their lowest in five months. 30-year fixed rate mortgages are averaging 6.94%. Mortgage rates are hinged on bond market interest rates, which dropped to historic lows this week as U.S. financial markets felt the ripple effect of Asia's troubled economy. Texas Instruments is eliminating about 3,500 jobs worldwide, with most of the cuts being made right here in the U.S. The company says it has been battered by lower prices from Asian competitors and weak demand for computer memory chips. It also plans to sell its memory chip business to Micron Technology in a deal worth $800 million. Craig Allen is off today. Linda Church of our New York station, WCBS-TV, joins us this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Dawn. It's Friday. I hope I there's know. sunshine. I, and you know what else? <laughs> we have a lot going on this weekend. We have an awful lot going on. We've got Father's Day this weekend, Father's Day and also the first day of summer on Sunday, so a busy weekend weather-wise. We also had a lot going on yesterday. Take a look. This is t hail in Tulsa. Look at that. Uh, not unusually large. That's around marble size, but uh, an awful lot of rain in some Severe storms there. It was actually a line of severe storms, and let's head a little bit further north, and you'll see what this same line of severe storms did in Des Moines. There you go, heavy rain, about four inches of rain, and this is basically the aftermath, what you're seeing here. A lot of folks flooded out. This is the cold front that actually caused the severe weather. Today, it looks like it'll bring strong showers and thunderstorms from the Gulf Coastal states all the way to the Mid-Atlantic states. Late day thunderstorms throughout much of the northeast, and you know Florida could use some rain. It's been so hot and humid down there. Looks like inland communities in Florida could see an afternoon shower and even the possibility of a thunderstorm. Beautiful day all the way from Wisconsin throughout much of the Plain states and out west, right along the California coastline, no problems, mostly sunny skies. The Pacific Northwest today could see some more clouds around. If you're headed to the airports today, possible delays throughout uh, much of the east, Boston, New York, Washington, D.C., and Atlanta. Let's head from our nation's weather map to your hometown. In New York today, we'll have some afternoon thunderstorms, a high of 82. Chicago, sunny and breezy, 81. Miami, sunny, 94. Dallas, afternoon thunderstorms, a late day possibility. Denver, sunny and 88. In sports, the U.S. Open Golf Championship is underway at San Francisco's Olympic Club. The deep rough helped land Tiger Woods at four over par along with his former Stanford teammate, Casey Martin. Martin is the first player to ride in a cart at a major championship. He birdied number six. The unusual, a fan picked up Jeff Maggart's ball on 17. 
The usual, Jack Nicklaus in his 42nd consecutive U.S. Open. His approach on an 18 set up, up a, set up a birdie. He's at three over. Payne Stewart, who won in 1991 after holding the first round lead, is leading again. He birdied 17, wound at four under par. What a birdie. Look at that move. In baseball, make it 10 wins in a row for the San Diego Padres. Chris Gomez hit a ball Barry Bonds could not catch in the ninth at San Francisco. Instead of a tie-breaking home run, Gomez was given a triple. Oops, he scored on a sacrifice fly, and the Padres win 7-6. Mark McGuire set a record by hitting his 33rd homer before July 1st. He also became the 11th player to reach the third tier at Houston's Astrodome. Cardinals win 7-6. On the scoreboard, the Dodgers shut out the Rockies. Pirates did likewise to the Brewers. Cubs handled the pot Phillies. Other winners, the Diamondbacks, the Marlins, and the Expos. In the American League, a tough night for the Orioles and their ball girl. She fielded a fair ball hit by Toronto's Shannon Stewart. It was ruled a double. Toronto wins 13-6. Other winners, the Angels and the Rangers. The Twins won at Chicago in a game shortened by rain. Also winning the Royals, the Red Sox, and the Yanks. The Detroit uh, Red Wings basked in the warmth of a June sun, a second Stanley Cup, and a comrade. The Stanley Cup drew about one million fans to a parade and a big rally. The biggest cheers went to defenseman Vladimir Konstantinov, who walked with help one year after he was injured in an auto accident. The Red Wings, to me, are all what life is all about. It's sharing and caring and believing. We realized coming into this year that we weren't satisfied winning once. And somehow I don't think everyone's going to be satisfied with just two. We've got to keep this thing going. The limo driver held responsible for that accident, who was driving with a suspended license released from jail yesterday, two months early for good behavior. Police in Paris are trying to find out who stole 15,000 tickets to the World Cup. Authorities say burglars took the tickets from an American travel agency on Wednesday. But the agency says the tickets were pre-sold and will be useless to the thieves. It's offering a $150,000 reward for the return of those tickets. No questions asked. When the CBS Morning News continues, we'll recap our top stories. And an award-winning newspaper columnist winds up in hot water for mixing fact and fiction. Stay with us. We will be right back. Keep cool, call Bryant for the Quantum Plus air conditioner. It's got Puron, Bryant's own environmentally sound coolant, so it'll make you feel comfortable summer after summer. Come on, Bryant, and rescue me, rescue me. When your allergies are a nightmare, you need fast relief. You need the power of Zyrtec. Prescription Zyrtec starts working fast and last 24 hours. So, when allergies are a nightmare, remember the power of Zyrtec. In studies, drowsiness was the most common side effect. Other side effects included fatigue and dry mouth. Most were mild or moderate. To learn more, ask your doctor or pharmacist. She was coming home to the jungle and to their wild, untamed love for butter. Cut down by cholesterol. Until... Darling, look what I've brought back. I can't believe it's not butter. It's the premier spread flavored with real sweet cream buttermilk for a fresh butter taste, but without the cholesterol. How civilized. I can't believe it's not butter. The taste you love without the cholesterol. A log cabin on the lake. Just me and my wife and fishing. I can tell you what I won't do. I won't just curl up and vegetate. Do something I've wanted to do since college. Go back to college. Eating un crucero. Alaska. Secure your retirement plans with U.S. savings bonds. The easy way to save, the safe way to invest. Get them where you work or bank. Take stock in America. U.S. savings bonds. On the CBS Morning News, here's a look at today's weather. 
Numerous thunderstorms over the Northeast this afternoon. More thunderstorms in the Mid-Atlantic states and the Deep South. The Midwest turned sunny. Taking another look at our top stories, talks resume this morning aimed at getting General Motors assembly lines moving again. Today is the second week of a walkout that has dried up the pipeline of parts in some of GM's most popular vehicles. And severe weather has battered the Midwest with flooding and wind damage. 25 people were hurt when powerful winds knocked down a circus tent in La Crosse, Wisconsin. An attorney for the suspect in the murder of the son of entertainer Bill Cosby says he plans to prove another man committed the crime. Ukrainian immigrant Mikhail Markasev is charged with the murder of Ennis Cosby. But Markasev's attorney says the real killer was someone who was actually with Markasev. Opening statements in the trial are scheduled for Monday. An award-winning columnist for the Boston Globe has resigned from the newspaper after she admitted to fabricating people and quotes in some of her columns. David Robichaux of our Boston station, WBZ-TV, has our report. Boston Magazine called her one of the city's 50 most intriguing women in 1997, the same year she won a national award for distinguished writing. Now she admits that in four columns, she actually made up the people she wrote about. They don't exist including a Boston Marathon spectator and the mother of a girl burned by a hair iron. But to some, the most disturbing was a column about a cancer patient reacting to the news of a so-called miracle pill. The young woman named Claire, desperate for a cure, says, quote, rub it on my skin, pop it to me in a pill, shoot me up with it. If I could find a way to steal it, I would. And I've gone casket shopping. I've had dreams of lying in one with a big hole in my head that you can see right through. It drives my mother crazy. It's despicable. It really is sad. Perry Coleman is a two-time breast cancer survivor and a journalist. It's ridiculous that she did it because we're a dime a dozen, that we're all over the place. There's zillions of us who will talk about, you know, all these so-called cures that are out there and, and what it means to us. And um, I don't know, I hate it because journalists have such a bad name anyway. Globe editor Matt Storen says, quote, obviously each of them violated the sacred trust that the Globe has with its readers. When Globe readers pick up their morning paper, they'll find Patricia Smith's final column explaining why she made up those stories. Globe editors say there'll also be an article about Patricia Smith, a hard news story with just the facts. In Boston, I'm David Robichaux, News 4 New England. Coming up on CBS This Morning, our day at the beach. It's a theme show. I'm Dawn Stensland, and this is the CBS Morning News. Miss Allison McTerry loves her strawberry, so it's juicy juice from Libby she'll choose. And her mother's glad, for no sugar do they add, and it's made with 100% juice. Both agree, brand new concentrate is really great. Storing it's a breeze, and it carries with ease. Allison states, it's the best juice to date. Juicy Juice, now in a non-frozen concentrate. Imagine a day without allergies, without sinus pressure, headache, and pain. Make it happen with Benadryl Allergy Sinus Headache. Unlike the leading prescription allergy medicines that don't have a pain reliever, Benadryl Allergy Sinus Headache gives you maximum strength sinus pain relief, plus the allergy relief of Benadryl's histamine blocker. Imagine life without allergies and sinus pain with Benadryl. CBS Tonight. After a week in the rat race, it's time for comedy. What do you want to be when you grow up? Bill Gates' partner. Join the cause. If you don't have a wife, I coach you up with one. You can't say the darndest things. Then, when you least expect it, somebody might say... Smile. You're on candid camera. Hi. What? You're kidding. It's television's craziest half hour. Hosted by Peter Funt and Suzanne Summers. Candid camera. Right after kids say CBS Tonight. Television at its best is powerful. Is the baby okay? I gotta do a crash C-section. Learn anesthesia stat! It's the baby. Move! Television at its best is emotional. Nothing you can do. There is a surgery. It's an incredibly risky, drastic procedure. Television at its best 
is inspiring. I'm trying to help your daughter. Television at its best. What if you didn't have to be sick anymore? That'd be pretty cool. Is Chicago Hope, CBS Wednesday. Some collectors are the new owners of items from some of Hollywood's finest productions. Christie's Auction House in New York sold off memorabilia from several popular TV shows and movies yesterday. The biggest prize was an autographed Seinfeld script, which went for $20,000. Items from Star Trek and a James Dean contract were sold. A working model of the Titanic from a 1953 film failed to sell because of low bids. The ever-secretive Carlos Castaneda, who wrote best-selling novels about a sorcerer named Don Juan, has died. For more than 30 years, Castaneda claimed to be an apprentice of the Indian shaman Don Juan, who critics did not believe existed. Castaneda died in his Los Angeles home from liver cancer in April. He is believed to have been 72 years old. And finally this morning, a White House story of blackmail, bootlegging, and murder. No, we're not talking about the Clinton White House or the latest Hollywood movie. As Bill Plant reports, we're talking about the most scandal-ridden White House ever, 75 years ago when Warren G. Harding was president. The political scandals, you've got astrology, you've got the curse of the Hope Diamond. I mean, it's an extraordinary tale. President Harding's wife, Florence, is the focus of historian Carl Anthony's new book. And what went on in the Harding administration makes Whitewater, Iran-Contra, and Watergate all sound tame. What we've got here are the smoking gun letters uh, written by Harding in which he capitulates to his mistress's demand for blackmail. Here's Florence Harding's rage. In her private diary, she writes, Love makes all men liars. Grace Cross, one of the president's mistresses, seen here on film, turned violent when their affair went sour. Grace Cross, who really caused a lot of trouble with him, uh, broke a bottle on his back, later called it a birthmark that she could describe on his back. And here's a code penned in Harding's own handwriting, which the president used to correspond with a mistress. The word grateful, for example, was code for all my love to the last precious drop. Then there was Evelyn McLean, a morphine addict and owner of the Hope Diamond, which she wears here in this picture. McLean secretly let President Harding use her home for his trysts, even though she was Mrs. Harding's close friend. Warren Harding is generally remembered as the nation's least effective president. And Florence Harding, although she was a crusader for women's rights, is probably best remembered for rumors that she poisoned her husband. Not quite, says Anthony. Florence Harding was really an unwitting accomplice to a negligent homicide. Problem was, President Harding was taking quack medicine for heart disease and it killed him. So anytime you think that modern day scandal is engulfing Washington, just remember, it's been worse. Bill Plant, CBS News, the White House. And that is the CBS Morning News for Friday, June 19th. I'm Dawn Stensland. I hope you have a great Friday and a great weekend. CBS.com for news 24 hours a day. Experience CBS News. It's a fun-filled romp in the sun. See all the latest beach and water toys along with food ideas beyond soggy sandwiches, plus your latest weather. Coming up on This Morning. PBA Bowling rocks the Calvo. Then, tennis legends Jimmy Connors and Bjorn Borg take the challenge. CBS serves up a spectacular Saturday. The address is CBS. Welcome home.
striking auto workers put the brakes on the big selling season at General Motors showrooms nationwide. As firefighters in Florida continue to battle out of control wildfires, the White House sends help in the form of disaster aid and a potentially life saving warning about Pazacor, the high blood pressure pulled off the market. Welcome to CBS This Morning. I'm Jane Robolo. And I'm Dawn Stenzel, and this is Friday, the 19th of June. Negotiations resume this morning between General Motors and the striking United Auto Workers. More assembly lines have shut down, and the effects of the two week old walkout are now being felt in GM showrooms across the country. Jim Axelrod is standing by in Dallas with the latest. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Jane. At this car dealership in Dallas, they say they've got enough new.